Hello everyone, and welcome to a special edition of this Nintendo Life. It's me, NBZ, I'm here! Um, but, um, but Bally couldn't make it, unfortunately he was, he was murdered brutally. Um, he, there was a bomb in his chest and it blew up, and, um, I couldn't do anything about it, uh, just, I didn't have the right numbers to get through the door to get to him. Um, so instead, I, MBZ, number, I don't know, uh, one, probably a bad number to be, but, um, yeah, that's me. Uh, I'm joined by some experts in the field of visual novels, uh, and of the work of Kotaro Ushikoshi, because today we're going to be talking about the visual novel... 999 nine, nine. nine persons nine hours nine doors i believe or maybe it's nine hours nine persons nine doors um but uh joining me today are three experts in the field um and uh yeah from the tnl community but also uh very uh good people who know their stuff when it comes to this stuff better than i do so they're gonna help me uh, through this uh, and chatting through this this game uh, so i'm joined first by acerbus hello hello very excited to talk about this game i have a page of notes so I hope you, excellent I hope that's good i like i like being prepared that's that's yeah. good um i'm also joined by mirandum hello hello um i'm mirandum i'm super excited to talk more about 999 it's a fantastic game excellent uh and uh pr billy also joins us hello hello yeah as uh everyone else said i'm you know also excited to talk about this game and i feel like it's kind of hard to find people that uh you know have yeah this game <laughs> Yeah, totally. So, I mean, I was going to talk about this on the main show, and I think I probably will um, in maybe an abbreviated format. But um, usually what that would entail is me just splurting a bunch of stuff and Bally just quietly nodding along, not really knowing what's going on. So it's nice to have people to kind of bounce off of with this stuff and uh, dig into it. And, and that's what we'll do, I'm sure. So we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, kind of um, how we got into the series, these games, and then kind of go non-spoilery. And then we'll kind of go into spoilery thoughts. So if you haven't played the game, uh, you can stick around for a little bit for the beginning of this. Uh, and then go away when all the spoilery stuff uh, comes about uh, and then uh, you know come back after that and we won't be spoiling anything from the next two games mainly because i haven't played them yet so, so i don't want to be spoiled on that um so it's mainly just going to be for uh, 999 itself but um yeah i guess let's kick things off uh with what what's your history with this series um and with the work of kataru chikoshi the the kind of lead writer uh, behind these games and also behind uh, the ai the somnium files games and now owns a studio i believe alongside code Daka, who is kind of like from the Danganronpa um, series, uh, 2Q Games, um, and I believe they are putting out a bunch of stuff together at this point in time. They did World's End Club, which I know is not very good. I've not heard good things about that. Um, and I think the new Rain Code game, is that from 2Q? Do, do you guys I know that at all? it technically is, but it's more Kodaka's project, I think. Okay, yeah, it's more of a Danganronpa follow-up, yes. so it's probably yeah. less Uchikoshi involved mm -hmm. in that sort of stuff. But um, Acerbus, kick us off. Where, where did you kind of get into this series and uh, this, this yeah. man's work? So this was just a game I picked up on the in, in the in the DS sort of pirate era. Mm, <laughs> I, I see, we, yes. We all had, this was a game that I just downloaded and tried, and immediately it was like whoa this is like the tone of this game is not like other ds games this is mm -hmm. this is very different and i really really loved it and then i think vlr was soon to be out so i guess the 3ds was out at this point uh i played vlr immediately and that was even bigger and then we waited a long time mm -hmm. for zero time dilemma <laughs> Was else. there like a, I think there was a Kickstarter or something for Zero Time Dilemma or some kind of crowdfunding? So Zero Time Dilemma, it was like a sort of uh, Project Rainfall equivalent where I it, was see, like, okay. it was like, this is not happening unless people uh, show their support for it. And eventually it did happen. So. I believe it was called Project Bluebird, is that right? Bluebird, yeah. That's right. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and um, and again, have you played what other kind of stuff uh, have you played? Have you played? You played the both the AR the Somnium file games, right? Yeah, so I've played all the I've played all the Ichikoshi games. Yeah, I I played about ten hours of World's End Club before giving up. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> and what about stuff like Ever Seventeen, like the old? No, stuff I haven't gone. Ever? I haven't done. I haven't done anything before Nine Nine Nine. A lot of that stuff's actually okay. kind of hard to find. Right. Um, but yeah, I. I should at one point because I love this. The I love this mind <laughs> uh <-huh, yes. laughs> uh, of, that came up with all this stuff. Yeah, that's um, yeah. And then I replayed the non re games version as well. Uh, so I've played. I've played both the DS version and the version that you played. Excellent, cool. So both perspectives on the series, which is good. Uh, Miranda, what about you? How did you kind of get into this this game in the series? 
So, I think it was 2013, 2014, uh, a YouTuber that I watched, uh, Dookie Shed, he did a video on DS games, and he talked about 999, and it was kind of like, not like anything I'd played at the time, so I was like, oh, this sounds really interesting, I'll give it a try, I picked up a copy at my local GameStop, and I absolutely loved it. Whenever I realized that there was a sequel, I immediately went to another GameStop, picked that up, and played that, and I was so disappointed to find out that the third game might not ever come out, and that was, mm. like, a service set, a very long wait, and it was very exciting whenever we finally did get that final game. Yeah, and that came out in, like, that was, like, 2016 or something? In 2017. I think. Yeah. I think. Okay. Or no, was it 2016? I think it was 2016, yeah. I was looking them up, and, um, yeah, it did seem like there was a little bit of a break there in mm -hmm. between, because um, this, this first game was, like, 2009, well, I mean, of course it had to be 2009, mm -hmm. didn't it? <laughs> Cause they're just insane um but um but yeah it's it feels like um it it was a bit of a struggle to to get the third game out because the series just wasn't very financially successful um at least in japan it wasn't Especially it only japan. actually yeah yeah only kind of found a bit of success over here um and uh and we've also played both air the summoning files games as we we both kind of played through them uh, together last year which was fun um yeah um uh excellent and pr billy how about you um, so my experience with 999, um, I played it in my first year of college all the way back in 2010. Um, I played it because I, I very distinctly remember this. Uh, I finished, I went through the three original Phoenix Wright games and I was okay, looking yeah. for a new visual novel to pick up and uh, I, I don't remember what online form it was, but I, I remember some people talking about this crazy visual novel game that just came out within the last year. Um, so me and one of my good friends actually picked it up together. Um, and basically, you know, over the course of like a week, we just played it straight. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely, uh, definitely something that sticks in my mind. Other than that, I played you know, VLR, uh, Virtue's Last Reward, and Zero Time Dilemma, like, the day they came out. Um, so, uh, yeah, other than that, um, I haven't really played many of the other um, games um, uh, by Ichikoshi. Is that how you say his mm -hmm. name? Ichikoshi, um, yeah, I think so. The only other one I really played was, uh, funnily enough, I think within the past year, I played the first AI Somnium Files. <laughs> I still haven't okay. played the second one yet. <laughs> so cool. um, yep nice um yeah and, and it feels like um i mean the second era of the somnium files games has a thing where it's like hey if you haven't played the first one then click this option and we'll basically remove all references to the first game really? in the second That's one interesting yeah and i think it was an attempt to get people to play it if they hadn't played the first one because i think that i feel for a lot of people that can be like a barrier to entry right and yeah i guess this this series seems like it's a bit more interconnected in that way and you kind of have to play them in order and all or to kind of get everything out of them um i don't know would you guys think that's the case um that you know if someone was to jump into virtue's last reward they'd be very confused um versus just you know starting with 999 i think you'd be confused but you definitely wouldn't get the intended experience i would say yeah yeah um, cool yeah. um and uh for me i guess so i uh i heard about 999 in like 2010 ish um on radio free nintendo a podcast i talk about uh, that we listen to all the time on this show and um i heard like a lot of uh kind of like praise from it from james jones on that show and i always thought hey well that sounds cool that's something i could get into because i think at the time i had only played like the first phoenix wright game so i was very kind of like a baby to the visual novel genre and i was like not really um uh you know that uh, deep into things so i was like well that sounds cool maybe i'll get around to it one day uh and here we are i don't know <laughs> 13 years later <laughs> finally getting around to it um but in that time i've i've gone through a lot of different stuff I right? played every Phoenix Wright game, um, played through the entire Dang and Romper trilogy, um, and uh, the AI the Somnium Files game, which I played the first one. I think it was it the start of last year. It was either the start of last year or it was 2021. I can't remember what year it was. Um, maybe it was because the the sequel came out last year, didn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I played it in 
January because I remember over Christmas I played uh, the new Guardians of the Galaxy game right so I played that like all the way through over Christmas and then it just got to like the start of January and I'm like well what's my first game of the year going to be and that was on Game Pass and I was like well I've been meaning to get around to this guy's games for a while and this one it, I think Air of the Somnium Files is actually a really nice entry point um, for these types of games because it's clean it's the voice acting just kind of like rolls over you it's it's um it's very approachable and I think it's easy to kind of like jump around in that game as well like it it doesn't feel um it doesn't feel like obviously the original ds version of 999 where it was uh, a lot harder to deal with kind of the flow chart situation right um so um so yeah I, I jumped in with that game and then i would i just absolutely loved it i thought it was fantastic and of course you know we can get into it um you know these games have uh, a horniness factor uh, i would say 999 is like a little lower on the scale generally but there's still like a bunch of stuff in this game where i'm like all right this is uh let's 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 uh calm, calm down here there's lots of just like dumb stuff where um you know june pays like misinter quote unquote misinterpreting things and they're leaning into it like right before they go down into the um the elevator with the uh, the water underneath and they're just talking about wetness and below and like this it's like it's really stupid um and it like it feels like it kind of like does a bit of total whiplash with the game but um yeah ai the something files does a lot of that stuff um and uh, the sequel does as well um but yeah i mean having loved both of those games i'm like well uh, and you guys as well on the discord were like hey when are you gonna play 999 i was like all right i better get around to it and so uh yeah i was yeah i was getting a bit worried we were hyping up too much but uh, yeah um but um no i think it delivered i think it really did deliver and we'll get into that but um yeah i guess overall what what's everyone's kind of feelings and, and thoughts on this game uh kind of non-spoilery and uh yeah i guess how did it kind of impact you at the time when you first played it uh yeah so i mean obviously this is probably quite a self-selecting panel in that we all really, yeah. really like this game um, of course, yeah. <laughs> but yeah this is like right up there for me in terms of stories and games i think it's like truly phenomenal and all uses the medium in a way that uh it is really unique and like mm -hmm. no one else is really doing shockingly and yeah i think it's just the the tone the characters i think it's just all really incredible yeah it's very atmospheric i also really like that they used a lot of uh pseudoscience and even just other real life concepts mm. that made it really interesting for me yeah i mean i i you know, thought about some of my favorite games before. This game's, you know, easily top 10, I would say. Um, absolutely love this game. It's one of the few visual novels I've ever replayed. Um, I think the only mm. one, other one being the original Phoenix Wright. Um, so I think that says a lot about this. But uh, yeah, as Mirandum said, I think what I really like about this game is how a good chunk of it is based in you know actual real life theories and whatnot which i think is pretty interesting yeah totally it's interesting that you say like a uh, visual novel that you've replayed when this is a game that is kind of about replaying the game as well so it's like how many times have you played through the thing i, I like, guess really, that's true how many I, parts, right? when i think uh, of i guess yeah. when i think of like replaying i think of like you know getting from the, the very experience. beginning yes yeah. yeah totally yeah yeah um, i get what you mean um yeah it is funny though because especially with the ds version right like you do have to exactly, just go through yeah. it from the start every time uh, yeah. and i guess we can get into that but yeah it's a good point you bring up about the kind of i call them the wikipedia kind of law dumps where for some mm -hmm. reason a character is just like hey by the way i know this really oddly weirdly specific uh bit of stuff here let me just tell you about it for like 10 minutes straight did you know the titanic had a sister ship <laughs> and this was wild though right because that was the first thing i was gonna bring up is like the gigantic well that sounds made up and stupid and i go on wikipedia and i'm like what the fuck this was a real thing there was a real ship called the gigantic yeah. that was like a hospital ship i guess right mm -hmm. as they talk about in the game um and um and yeah i i think that's a really cool element of it because you do get to moments where they'll start talking about something and you're like but is is a morphogenetic field a real thing <laughs> like I don't, I don't know like are, are, are we really going to be doing telepathy here like what's going on um so there's some uh there's some wild stuff in there for sure and um i did I did enjoy those sections and I think for me those were the parts like it, because the game doesn't kind of fully reveal itself up until a certain point right and it depends what path you go down first and what kind of endings you get to in the initial kind of run of it 
And I think the opening is really strong. And like this idea that like, oh shit, I'm in this ship with these bunch of random people. We have this weird game going on. No one knows what's happening. Like it's a really strong setup. And then I feel like it, um, the middle part of the game is a lot of going from puzzle room to puzzle room with like short bits of things thrown in there. So I think the peppering in of the, um, the kind of Wikipedia lore dumps is quite good because it allows you to get a little bit of intrigue and interest of like they're clearly telling me this for a reason right there's no th there wouldn't be a reason for like june to suddenly be like oh have you heard of ice nine it's this weird thing anyway because we're in a freezer so we might as well talk about this thing and it's like i don't how does this relate to anything like they must be telling me this thing for a specific purpose and every single one of those things is purposeful right like the first one you get to with the the dog picture which i didn't like it took me a minute to be like oh shit it is a dog right because they have to kind of like show you the real image um kind of layered over the top to understand that and i was like okay so they're talking about this whole like somehow everybody just like gets information even though there's no trace of it passing from people to one another like and, and i'm like is that actually a real phenomenon or not i don't know do you do you guys like look at that stuff up is that a real phenomenon i'm not sure um like, but uh, almost certainly not right yeah a lot of the, yeah no a lot of it is just um pseudoscience weird pseudoscience but yeah it, like it does fit the world like it does yes like, um i guess when everyone is buying in on the bullshit it's like mm -hmm. oh uh sure this is just how it is because every 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 single character has their own little uh <laughs> wikipedia <laughs> dumps mm -hmm. that they, they can spout on you at any moment um so yeah. there's there's a website that i've found that has like a bunch of the real life references um it says oh, nice. you know, okay. what's real what's fake um, apparently the BBC experiments did happen. Um, they oh, may really? not have okay. happened to the extent that the game, uh, says. Um, I, that's one thing I found is like some of these things, like they happen and then the game kind of, you know, molds it into what it needs to. Um, so some examples being like anytime they talk about any chemical, you know, changing or crystallizing or whatnot those didn't mm. really happen it was like they give a time when they first started experimenting with those uh specific chemicals and compounds and whatnot but they didn't all of a sudden just start you know functioning or whatnot <laughs> um so yeah uh yeah that's cool yeah i, I do I think the stuff like that, right, where it's like suddenly this crystal formed into another thing and then all over the world, the other crystals were doing it. Um, the rat one was interesting as well, right, where it's like the same maze and they drop the rat in and each generation is able to then just instantly go to the other path. I feel like rat experiments like that, that to me sounds a bit more believable because I've, I've kind of heard of stuff like that before, but I think this one probably is played up, right? It, it probably wasn't, there probably was a rat experiment like this, but were the results the same as what they kind of talk about in the game where, you know, eventually six generations down, the rat just goes straight for the dark option instead of going to the electrified fence, right? Um, yeah. It is, it, is, it is super interesting. Like, all of these things, like, while you're playing through the game, they don't appear, like, very related. Uh, no. But they are all basically about communication through other means. Uh, yes. Just like communication through the through the morphogenetic field or whatever. Right. Um, right. Essentially telepathy, right? Yeah. And and like how how that <laughs> manifests. And I think like the one that really stuck with me was the monitor example where Lotus mm -hmm. is just hacking away at the screen and she's like, Hey, did you ever think about this? Like, what if we are just monitors? And what if yeah. our real consciousness lies like so, like that to me was like, oh Jesus Christ, we're getting some real yeah. philosophical shit here. Um where like like, there's a server that contains everyone's actual... It's like the Matrix, right? It's like everybody's body is actually in yeah. this giant kind of goo pit where you actually yeah. exist within a, another space. It, it is very Matrix-esque in that way. And, um, yeah, the idea of kind of, like, wireless connectivity and how that um, feeds into things. And then the idea that people with stuff like will get into prosopagnosia and, like, blindness and stuff like that. And amnesia as well amnesia right yeah. and that those are explained through like um a, a disability for the kind of like information to get to the monitor essentially um and and so like part aspects of people are kind of cut off because they're cut off from that kind of information flow that's coming towards them um which is i don't know it's, it's it's very interesting stuff at the very least and i mean all of it is relevant right eventually all of it becomes relevant to the the wider plot and what's really going on here um 
I want to talk about digital roots. Did any of you know what the hell a digital root was before you played this game? No. Nope. But I love it. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's a wild idea, right? So for people who don't know, essentially the idea is that you take a number. So say the number is uh, 1,350, right? You take that number and then you add all those numbers together. So 1, 3, 5, and 0. So that would add up to 9. And then that would be your digital root, right? Where everything that adds up together gives you that one number and you have to keep doing that until it gets to a single digit number right so if all the numbers add up to say 15 then you would then have to add one and five together and your digital root would be six so it's basically adding all the numbers up to eventually reach a point where it becomes a single digit number so you could have like one million whatever and you have to add all those numbers up then you might get a number that's like four digits add all those up you might get a number that's two digits add all those up and eventually you get to your core kind of individual number um and it's it's at the core of a lot of this game obviously the kind of like main plot elements it's used a few times in puzzles i was actually surprised through the game like how how little i used it in my own puzzle solving right it seems like a lot of the time it's either done for you or it's assumed or you know stuff like that there are times where you do have to kind of figure out stuff from digital roots but um i was expecting it to be a bit more and maybe it's, it's good that it isn't because it gives a bit more variety to the puzzle rooms but um yeah i don't know how you all felt about doing the kind of calculation stuff for uh for digital yeah. roots i mean and how much yeah that ultimately it. it's not too complicated right it's just adding up so i don't think yeah. you could design that many puzzles around it um right, so i am yeah. glad it's like not as um prevalent in the puzzles even though it is like super prevalent in the plot and obviously mm. and also you can you can like use it to work stuff out maybe earlier than the game intends you to about who is doing what and stuff. right uh but we can talk about that yeah. maybe. if you're paying attention <laughs> to who's going through what doors and yes why and who could have opened and... the number three door yeah. at this time and stuff you can be like oh so <laughs> It yeah, there's there's person. some yeah, there, there's some stuff going on there. I think that I just the the tricky part is right that uh, every character in the game kind of gets a code name. I think this kind of threw me off early because at the very very beginning of the game, your main character Junpei gives everyone names in his head so like mm. he calls lotus dancer originally and like it took me a while to like switch out of the initial because he gives you an initial impression of a name and then everyone changes their name about like 20 minutes into the game so it's this weird like getting back used to and then additionally you're trying to tie those names to the numbers and each number is kind of linked to the name in a sense right mm-hmm. the most obvious being seven who is the number seven um and then you have ace who is one like the card clover who is four like a four leaf clover snake like snake eyes is two mm-hmm. i don't know why santa is three i can't remember what the um, explanation behind that San was. is japanese for three it's ah i see okay june is the six month well, yeah lotus is eight because lotus have eight pals maybe is that it yeah i, I don't guess. know i forget <laughs> yeah and um mm-hmm. I think that's everybody because then uh, mm-hmm. Junpei doesn't doesn't have a code name right. and you know the ninth man the short lived ninth man um, uh, yeah. doesn't get one either but um, but yeah I think that was for me a little um, tricky just kind of keeping track of who people were and who which number they were right because yeah. they they talk about it in terms of names of characters mm-hmm. and then you have to do the hard work and then like, t- towards the end of the game you'll get okay so i know this character hongu which one's who so that's that person's real right. name <laughs> yeah so i have exactly. to link that to their code name and then yes so yeah on. then we start getting all the japanese names right at the end right mm-hmm. and uh yeah then then yeah, it yeah. adds i think by that point it's easier because you really do know all the characters at that point and it kind For of sure. uh, makes it a little bit yeah. um, easier but um um, how, how do you guys feel about the escape room puzzles generally? Um, because I think, um, for me, they're, they're an element that's cool, but I did get to a point eventually where I was like, I'm just going to look this one up, right? Like, there's some math stuff that goes on there. Like, there's the one where you're swapping the body parts and the heart, and it's like, I don't know how to balance the scales here. What am I really looking for? Um, and, and I think some of the solutions can get to a point where I'm like, I i could do this but realistically like i think thematically a lot of the puzzles tie into the narrative but the actual solutions and how you work them out sometimes it's just like well this is kind of a maths problem that i don't really want to do right now you know but how do you guys feel about them so i'm not great at puzzles honestly so i just kind of looked most everything up um Mm. i just don't have the patience for them so yeah i i'm just kind of there for the story uh yeah i will say that i replayed it recently and um i was very surprised at how quick the puzzle rooms go 
and I kind of understand how why they did that. I mean, the original DS version, you have to play through, you know, some of the rooms multiple times and whatnot. Um, so I, I understand why they did it. But yeah, some of those puzzle rooms take, you know, maybe five minutes sometimes, uh, especially like the first couple. Um, so I would say the puzzles probably on the lower end of uh, what makes this game so good. Uh, definitely, definitely story. Yeah, I kind of agree. I think the puzzles are a little bit weak in this game. A lot of them are just, they're not even puzzles, they're just sort of maths problems <laughs> for you to solve. Yeah. Um, and I think in this game, someone who's played it more recently, I think there's there's like two escape rooms in each sort of segment, like between each door, right? Yes. So yeah, you're doing quite a lot of puzzle solving in blocks and then a lot of story and then a lot of puzzle solving uh so it can get a bit much but yeah, yeah. and sometimes it's just like what it's asking you is <laughs> a bit ridiculous like okay do some calculation in hexadecimal or right yeah. just or just know what a magic square is and fill this in it's just like okay right there there are some puzzles where there's assumed knowledge on the part of the player yeah. it's like oh you should you should understand this theorem uh, and it's like no i do not i've not been to school in like 20 yeah. years so uh yeah i don't remember any of this shit um so so yeah it, it definitely i i think a lot of it is also the kind of like point and click adventure style just clicking around the environment right um which a lot of these games have you know it's in phoenix right um and uh yeah the somnium file games do it as well where you have to click around the environment and i think some of the joy though in those games is like i i want to click on everything in the somnium files games because there's always a joke somewhere there's always something funny and there's there's always a through line as well to those jokes like chairs are a big thing in that series whereas in this game for some reason you can click on lights all the time i don't know if you guys remember this but like i was clicking on lights in every room and for some reason they're always interactable and there's always some some kind of reference or some some joke tied into the lights in the room and i don't know what is up with that why it was decided that lights were going to be the one consistent thing that you could click on because there's lots of parts of the environment that you can't click on but for some reason every time there's like a light bulb or like you know any kind of like thing that um kind of lights up a room like a candle it um there's some some someone has something to say about it <laughs> so i don't know uh, i don't know what's what's up with that um but but yeah i i generally think that uh the the escape room puzzles are they're kind of like a means to an end right you kind of they're, they're almost like <laughs> it's a video game so we kind of have to have something for the player to do, do that isn't just like reading through text constantly or making like branching decisions um and so i think it's it's almost like a uh not a relic but it, like it feels like the thing that they felt at the time was best to kind of um to get the game part across essentially um but i think it kind of it, it feels to me like because the kind of middle part of the game is so um puzzle focused right it feels like you're getting little bits of story and you're getting you know different people you're staying with in each kind of room and each kind of section you're getting little it's bits and pieces but it does feel sometimes like i do a puzzle room then i get like a little bit of dialogue then i'm like straight into another puzzle room and i'm like can i just get through the puzzle room so i can get to the meat of what's happening here so yeah they're cool i think it's definitely the the weakest element of the game and i, I don't think it's aged super badly but um i think i believe the mobile version takes out the puzzles or at least yes, gives you the option right. to skip they're just not in yeah. there yeah yeah um which i think i totally understand why they would do that uh, makes it a bit smoother um but um yeah i'm, I'm interested so did them uh, maybe that came out after the nonary ver game version or maybe it was before but it doesn't seem like they didn't have like a skip puzzle thing in the nonary version game um so i don't know um but um but in terms of like um going back and like replaying stuff which eventually you have to do with the different branches i did find that it was quite quick once you knew what to do right i think the reason i took a longer time originally on the escape room puzzles was um i wanted to click everything in the environment because that's kind of how, how i approach these things right and so because of that you're reading all the text you're going through everything and you're figuring it out for the first time second time through you're like oh i remember this part i need to grab this from here and put it in here and the, th the thing that i do want to say that is quite good about this is first of all the flow chart has a bunch of different locks and keys so you can see like where you need to go to get them and you can jump around the flow chart as much as you want from whatever point right so it's easy to kind of go there and it tended to be the case that 
those locked conversations happen after like the first step of an escape room usually so i would do like step one of an escape room and be like oh i got the conversation and as soon as the conversation was done the lock would unlock itself oh. and i could just jump to the next one so i didn't even have to yeah i didn't even oh, have okay. to finish the um the full escape room yeah. you just need to get the conversation and then it clicks to be unlocked mm -hmm. and then you can jump ahead to the next one so it's actually a far less painful process than i expected going into it which was good um and, and i think if you do do those uh locks first time through like with the white side of the map um i had done the first two in my first path through i just did the first two locks not knowing um mm -hmm. and those kept unlocked when i went back to do the white route uh, afterwards so yeah. um that was good see in the, in the um, ds version if you messed up that conversation you have to start from the beginning again <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and i imagine having like multiple save files help there as well um to like save right mm -hmm. before a, a thing to yeah. make sure that you got it properly um did the ds version show stuff like the locks and keys and that sort of the stuff the ds or? version doesn't have a flow chart at all it's literally just oh really just play the game yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow okay that's fascinating that yeah th that means you really do just have to have a guide i guess you basically to have to through. yeah you basically have to look because there's only like exactly one combination of doors that leads to the safe ending so you have to do that and then there's exactly one combination yeah. of doors that leads to the true ending and so if you don't know it it's like <laughs> yeah, i guess technically it's... possible to figure out with context clues but really you you like need a guide right so it's a lot of just like um yeah it's you would have to do a lot of just experimentation basically yeah. right um and there are a lot of i guess there have to be a lot of combinations because you have two choices then three choices then three choices i think um and there are other kind of branches that kind of go alongside that so um i don't know i don't do the maths but it probably comes to nine at some point doesn't it that's just the way this entire thing is built um but um but yeah does um anyone else have anything like kind of non-spoilery before we kind of jump into uh the the meat of things no i'm all good great well um uh i i guess uh if you want to uh jump out without being spoiled on the rest of this game and what happens and all the the wild stuff that happens uh jump out now uh but come back once you've finished 999 because it's a fantastic game um and um yeah has has a lot of stuff going for it so um yeah feel free to do that and uh we'll see you soon but let's get into it um this game is wild, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, there's some shit that happens. Um, I I think, like, for me, the moment where things started clicking was... So here's the route that I went, right? So my mm -hmm. first route was knife ending, okay? So I go all yeah. the way down, get to the knife ending, and knife ending for me is, like, I think the worst ending because you really don't know anything. You get to mm -hmm. the end, and Junpei gets stabbed by somebody, Lotus is dead on the floor, mm -hmm. and you like you don't even see the person you're like well what that's ridiculous and um i was actually i was trying to listen to a bunch of different spoiler casts on this and one of the shows i listened to one of the guys on it hadn't wasn't very into visual novels and hadn't really played them before and um and he basically just got to an ending like i think it got the submarine ending <laughs> and he just stopped playing yeah. he just didn't oh, no. play the rest of the game i'm like wow okay like that's uh that's a very interesting thing to do but i I guess some people will have done that back in the day, um, mm. kind of not knowing how these things worked, right? Because you see credits, and you're like, well, I guess that's the end, and um, and it is weird, right? Um, but um, but yeah, I, I, I think that the knife ending for me was a little bit like, oh, well, I mean, I was intending to play through all these endings anyway, but I felt like I, I needed something a bit more, right? And I think yeah. for me, that was the kind of longest period without knowing stuff was all the way through and there's all the kind of intrigue that happens but you get the knife ending and then i went back and did the opposite route that i'd done before so i went i think into door mm. five instead of door four and then i went into door eight instead of door seven so i basically did kind of a crossover of what i'd done and that led me to the axe ending which uh is terrifying <laughs> and, like i did not have a good night of sleep after the axe ending is what i'll say um because uh i definitely think that one was the worst <laughs> Yeah, I really don't like the axe ending. Like you said, it is something that, you know, absolutely just curdles your blood and whatnot. I could <laughs> never look at Clover the same way again. <laughs> no. Uh, out of curiosity, what was your thought process? Do you remember your first past? path? And uh, yeah. do you have, like, a thought process behind it? I did. Yeah, so, like, 
my I generally was like, well, June is my friend. I'm going to stay with my friend, basically. That was the uh, the thing. And then very quickly, they're like, well, here's a situation where you can't be with your friend anymore. So I was like, well, uh, I mean, I know Lotus because I went through with her in the first door. So I'll just follow her, basically. Um, so I think that's my, my initial route was like going with June. And I, I think it's June, Lotus and someone else in that first um well, santa, santa maybe yes yeah, has to be santa has, has to, has to, has to because be he has june. to go with june every time um, <laughs> we can jump into this later but is i is santa's number zero or is it is it e is his number no. e that's three upside down because e would be uh, if we're going by base 10 or whatever like yeah. end up being five or something i don't know the reason but santa's number is nine yeah i don't what? think i don't know if they ever explicitly state it but it's heavily implied yeah. to be nine yeah santa's is that, nine that doesn't make any sense like yeah, I, at I least know. i understand i understand o for zero with o being you know yeah. the base so, numeral yeah so a so, carnage one is zero Akane's is zero, not, even though it says not. six. Like yeah. that to me, that's kind of bullshit. Honestly, just because <laughs> I, I, I think yeah. it would be, I would have been nice if it was an upside down thing, because then it yeah, does logically, cool. yeah, it tracks with like the idea of O zero being the same. And if yeah. Akane was six, that was actually nine upside down, mm -hmm. and Santa was three, that was E in base yeah. ten, then that agree. would be <laughs> cool. But it doesn't. It seems like they were yeah. like, nah, we just got to do this because yeah. otherwise none of it makes sense. I think they were, yeah. They was so, they were so in love with the idea of having a carne be zero rather than yeah. Santa be zero, even though like yeah. plot wise it doesn't really make that much of a difference. But no, they, they really really wanted a carne's number to be zero. Yeah, I mean they're both basically zero because they're working yes. together, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I guess symbolically and also for like all the the twist stuff at the end mm -hmm. and, and yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, going back to my my first route, that was <laughs> that was the thinking basically it was like follow June, and then as soon as June went away, I was like, well, I'll go. I'll go with Lotus then instead. And that led me to door four and door seven. So basically I went down left-hand side, then middle. So basically it kind of locked me straight into getting a terrible ending because I didn't go all the way down. You basically have to go all the way down left in order to get true ending. And you have to go all the way down, or you have to go five, then eight for the uh, the zero lost ending, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I basically crossed over both times because I went left, then right, then I went right, then left. And so I think because of that, I, I ran into knife ending first, then axe ending. So I didn't really, there, there was a, a big period of time there in the middle, that kind of like middle five, six hours where I'm just doing a lot of escape room puzzles and getting little bits and pieces, but nothing that's really moving my kind of understanding of the world or what's happening forward. Uh, you know, I'm just getting the Wikipedia lore dumps of like, mm -hmm. by the way, this monitor is not connected. <laughs> did you know about the? Did you know about the ship of Theseus? <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, there was a whole. There was a whole. Uh, yeah, that situation where they're like, "Well, is it the same?" And then there's a whole thing with a sock, and then it shows you a sock being patched up again. Yeah, it's like, sock. Is it the I, same sock? I absolutely it? love that conversation. It's probably my favorite yeah. idea in the whole but... entire game. <laughs> same. Yeah. Especially the way they portray it, pretty much immediately, because they're like, "Oh, mm -hmm. well, you know, it sort of relates to Snake," because you know. He's had some of his body parts replaced and whatnot, so. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. Oh, no, yes, that's because Clovers gift. are the one that tells you about that. Again, yes. a yeah. completely, completely out of character moment for this, like, young yeah. girl to suddenly go, hey, have you heard about this philosophy principle? <laughs> yeah, you bring up the idea that Snake does have, you know, a different body part, right? Uh, kind of, mm -hmm. um, uh, what do you call it? Um, prosthetic arm. The name. Prosthetic, there yeah. we go. Yeah, prosthetic arm. Um, and uh that kind of that you know it doesn't explain why clover has a whole fucking wikipedia entry downloaded to her brain but at least it, it has like a link to that in some yeah, way absolutely um, and, and going good. back to the escape room i mean it's pretty relevant to the escape room at hand you just replace you know two mannequins body parts with each other right so oh, it, yeah, it sort of flows a little bit into it but again like mm -hmm. why does this you know 17 18 year old girl know this <laughs> yeah. deep feel a lot uh <laughs> this deep theory um yeah 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 it's, it's crazy um so so yeah i think that was that was my initial path and then i think it starts to get into i think the the point where i was like oh okay is going down the right hand route where you go through door three and everyone's like what the fuck don't go through door three it's real fucked up that they let you just go through door three on your first run through if you want where you're like mm. I'm just going to leave Lotus and Clover behind. <laughs> We're just going to go. Or, like, whoever can get there first between... I think it's... I can't remember who so it is. So it's Lotus Santa. and Clover or Santa. Yeah. 
Or and, Santa, yeah. And it's really and Santa is like really running to the door because he, if he if he doesn't get there first, everyone's going to know that someone's lying about their bracelet number. Right. You know, I've never so, really thought about that. <laughs> that yeah. makes a lot of sense. So Junpei accidentally rumbled everyone by just like trying to go through door three. You know, it's it's pretty funny because they brush it off as, you know, they think it's life or death and that's always what I thought. But yeah, I've really never put together, hey, if Santa doesn't go through this door, the whole game is spoiled. <laughs> Um, but to touch on that a little bit, uh, I, I had mentioned I played with this, uh, played through this game with a friend when I first played, and uh, funnily enough, without even speaking to each other about it, both of us went through door three, uh, first time through. Uh, similarly to what you said, you know, June is a childhood friend, big mystery mm-hmm. at the beginning of the game. Uh, so basically, my thought process was, hey, no matter what, you know, stick with June to the end. Um, and uh yeah uh one uh door three like you said definitely makes uh june pay out to be you know a, a massive for lack of a better term asshole um but uh i actually really like that ending a lot because i feel like it just gives you enough to intrigue you um yes uh but not enough to really like spoil anything in the end yeah like it it i think it's because you get to the kind of prison area and seven's memory gets triggered right and that's where you get your first real like oh i remember something outside of this game um kind of moment uh, and obviously a lot of people remember stuff outside the game but because the nature of everyone who exists within this game is connected to the previous nonary games that happen no one really talks about it right snake knows and clover knows but they're they're not talking about it first because zero tells snake to not tell anybody about it and kind of threatens clover as a result of that um ace obviously you know being the kind of like mastermind behind the original um and everyone else like having some kind of involvement lotus is like she's the mother of two daughters who are both yeah. part of it right mm-hmm. um yeah. and, and, that's, and seven's uh, yeah, she's like the least least connected like, yeah yes. funnily enough yeah. if you never go through door two i don't think it ever goes over that i think the only way you can learn about that is through door two but i may be mistaken yeah because um because yeah she she only says that in one sequence right she's never yeah. kind of talks about it outside of that um that's with the the electric chair situation right yes um, exactly where she's talking the about room. and I, I think the, the i think the reason for that is she doesn't know exactly what happened she's like hey something happened to my kids nine years ago mm. but what am i doing here and what's you know she yeah. just kind of stumbles into it essentially yeah she's at the end when you're in the incinerator she's like what, what's the fuck what the fuck's going on yeah <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> everyone, everyone else knows what's going on and she's like so confused yeah right because she's not had anything explained to her essentially mm-hmm. um by that point so she's kind of like seven in a way that she's like on the hunt for the real story but um but yeah i think that prison sequence um with seven kind of remembering what had happened before and the boat and people being taken away like gives you the first insight into like oh this this happened in a weird way before something happened on this ship and you want to know what that is and i think that is that's the first kind of nugget to me and i think because it was my third route through i think if that had been like second or even first then it would have had a stronger driving point i think that maybe is one of the weaknesses of this game is that you can just end up like i did and go down two paths that can take a long time and not give you the full revelations because it was for me it very much felt like oh great setup and then quite a few hours of kind of downtime just slowly piecing things out and then eventually being like oh here's a nugget and then after that if you do the zero lost path as well as the true ending then it's just like i'm just gonna smash you over the head with yeah. revelations basically so it all just comes very thick and fast when you do it that way um but but yeah um how about you guys uh Miranda, what was your kind of first path through this game so i it's been a long time since i played the game for the first time i feel like i did the knife ending or no 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 the submarine ending because I just remember being shocked walking in on, like, Akane lying there dying and you have no clue what's going on. And then Junpei walks around just completely distraught, goes back to the submarine like, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. And then Mm -hmm. he gets stabbed and it's just like, excuse me, what? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, because everyone else is dead at that point as well. Yeah, and you have no clue because I think 
I think Ace was supposedly dead, but I think that what happened was he just faked his death. Yeah, Ace was faking. Yeah. 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 He's like turned away from the camera, so. Yep. Just, yeah. Is is that the assumption then that Ace kills you in knife ending as well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, because I was trying to think, like, who who was it? Because I, I got to a point where I'm like, well, it's got to be fucking Alice, doesn't it? This mummified Egyptian is just suddenly walking around the ship and murdering everybody, because who else could it be? Is no one else here, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, I, I was thinking that that could be a possibility, but I think it makes more sense, right, that Ace was the one doing it. Although, like, Yeah, I think no matter what you do in the first selection, Ace always goes through door five? No, door okay. Five. Well, he a- he um he doesn't go through at least like depending on what you choose in in uh, the middle hospital room, right? Because he kind of drugs yeah. himself with his whole soporal thing. So mm-hmm. I think what happens, and I'm mis- I I might be mistaken between four and five. Whatever room the ninth door goes through is the room. There's the door that Ace goes through. So yeah, I think it's implied he takes the knife from the ninth man. Yeah. Right. Okay. So he always has to have it in those endings where he kind of stabs everybody, basically. Yes. Yep. Um, because there is also a room with a gun which he takes yes. at yes. one point. Um, which is I don't know which room conveniently that is. hidden behind a puzzle where you have to know what people's faces look like. Yep. Exactly. Ah. Right. Yes. <laughs> which, oh, yeah. It's the the whole box situation, yeah. right? Where it's, you have to put I, the pieces into the box. They hit the but they we... hit the gun behind the one puzzle where <laughs> Ace can yeah. do. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and yeah, so I, I think um, any any do you guys anyone else remember kind of like their first path through the game? So yeah, to be honest, I don't one? remember. Yeah. I think I did the knife ending first, okay. uh, and then I think I immediately looked up the flow chart. <laughs> then you were like others. confused and like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> what's going on here? Um, yeah, I I do appreciate that. Obviously, in the nonary version you are able to see all the strands from the beginning and you're like okay i know that there are a bunch of question marks here um so you will fill everything in there is one question mark that i actually never did which is there's a route to get onto the submarine ending from the middle path so if you go down door eight and you get to like that kind of next cross section you can go down a route to get to the submarine path from there but what i did was i just went all the way down the right hand side through door three right you go through door three and you just end up all the way down you're basically locked into the submarine path from that that's like the one route that is the flow chart just completely locks you but you can get onto that flow chart from that other branching point but i've never done that question mark so i actually don't know what happens in that little sequence there but, i um, don't think it's very important i think that's just a relic yeah. of trying to fix the flow chart onto something that right. didn't really exist before and they're like oh but there's one combination where you just need to swap over <laughs> to the other to right. the other side yeah. basically um yeah i doubt anything <laughs> critical happens that's cool yeah i was thinking about like should i go and play that one question mark just to see but it probably would have just been a little bit of um i don't know uh different text that i hadn't seen before um which one of the things that i think the nonary version game is great for is just the skipping text function where you just click skip and then it will automatically stop itself as soon as it gets to new dialogue so you can just go all the way through and it'll be like oh here we go here's the conversation you want um which is nice funnily enough the ds version that was actually in the original yeah, yeah. That was oh okay this one as well yeah which made it a little yeah. bit more bearable but <laughs> so the main problem with the ds version is having to redo the escape rooms yeah. like you have to redo yes. like you have to redo that first third class cabin like every five or six time. times totally. so five or six times to get the to get all the endings wow. um, you mean the one where he's escaping with the water going into yeah because you go yeah. right back to the beginning and do that oh my so, god so skipping through the text is really fast but the escape rooms is what takes like <laughs> click 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 yeah. click click it it took me quite a long time to do that first escape room because i was like trying to yeah. figure things out right you're just kind of like not knowing what's going on so um yeah that did i would not want to do that one multiple times i i only ever had to do it once which was nice right yeah. uh do it at the very start um actually you know funny that now i can go back to um, oh, yes. nirvana initiative and play <laughs> that uh that bonus thing now that i understand yeah. the uh the first puzzle so i'll have to go and do that um should we talk about characters? Because um, mm-hmm. I think like the identities and characters is very much tied up with a lot of this stuff. Um, obviously, everyone is connected to this in some way. Uh, so you have Seven, who is the cop from the past, who followed everybody, detective work, trying to get people out. 
um, Lotus, who was the mother of two of the girls um, in the original experiment. I guess like the broad idea, right, with the nonary games is that this pharmaceutical company, Cradle Pharmaceuticals, Mm -hmm. set up by these four evil Japanese men um, for the express purpose of this one man wanting to eventually see someone's face by looking through someone else's eyes. It's a great motive. Uh, Insane. (laughs) Fucking insane. Um, uh, Set up this entire thing where they have, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, siblings one in one place one in the other and forcing them through through a a, a way of forcing the morphogenetic telepathic field yeah. through epiphany and danger these are yes, the two things I epiphany and danger in order to trigger a response that forces a mm-hmm. kind of telepathic wave to go from one sibling to the other sibling um and yeah this entire kind of situation happens as a result of the fallout of that experiment and everything that happened with it um and ace being kind of like uh, gentaro hongo who is the ceo um kind of masterminding it um june obviously we can get into june there's a fucking oh. lot of june you say, <laughs> oh, you say obviously but yeah <laughs> like oh, what boy. actually happens is what I, oh my god confusing. um we'll just say we'll deal with her in a second um <laughs> same with santa i guess but like both of them both of them were involved in the nori games yeah. in the past as kids and it's the same with snake and clover both involved in yep. nori games as kids um and then junpei is just like junpei just wasn't involved was he right like he wasn't no. a part of the original nori games he was just a childhood friend of akane yes. and because of that close connection they have they had to put him in this because he's the link basically he's yeah the because she sees everything. him from the past yeah. and goes okay we have to recreate this uh-huh. so, yes. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and one. then you have the ninth man who is uh, also <laughs> part of the original experiment uh, he was mm-hmm. the scientist I believe Kubota um, who yeah. was kind of sorting all this stuff out um, I guess before we dive into all that bullshit ed- anyone have a favourite character that stand out for them someone that they uh, they latched onto that they liked quite a lot I mean a- after the ending for me it's like Arne knowing she was okay. just she was just <laughs> pulling everyone's strings the entire doing time doing insane it's shit so yeah and some of the stuff she says like when you play through this game again in like hindsight it's like oh my goodness like yeah i yeah. like her and uh junpei and their whole dynamic i thought it was really cute and fun mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah uh, i might be the i might be the odd one out here but i think my character you know 50 50 sometimes i go back and forth it's either uh snake or clover for me <laughs> okay. especially after yeah. the uh safe ending I think it's pretty awesome. Interesting. I liked Lotus yeah. a lot more than I expected to as well, because she's actually like yes. really smart and kind of a badass in her own way. Yeah. I think it's this weird thing with Japanese media though, where she's clearly like twenty five, but they're like, You're the oldest woman who yeah, ever existed, exactly. you old windbag. And just like, What what are you talking about, game? Like this is bizarre. Uh but yeah, they constantly have I think Seven and Lotus have that back and forth where they're just like arguing constantly. And I'm like, Why why is this a thing? I don't understand this. It's like uh I don't know. I guess as soon as you become a parent, it's like the thing with Auron in Final Fantasy Ten where like everyone's like, Oh man, old old man Oren, and he's clearly like early 30s but clearly he's past his prime over the hill um yeah it's it's a funny thing i guess about like uh, japanese media and stories that anyone over the age of 30 is considered an ancient relic <laughs> and is basically dead at that point so um yeah that's kind of the situation there i think um in a way i like every character in this game uh including yeah. ace uh, i think his role I mean, is, ace as know, a villain is yeah is so yeah incredible. exactly like i i remember going through the first time and you know ace does his whole oh i'll stay back and whatnot yeah uh, and me and my friend were like wow what a nice guy this man <laughs> could never do anything wrong <laughs> um but yeah i think for me probably you know uh unfortunately i think uh seven and lotus probably fall a little bit on the lower end uh interesting more mm-hmm. more so seven uh, i think for me personally just because you know he has this whole oh i'm a cop thing um but yeah I, outside of that i i don't think he does a whole lot throughout the game honestly uh, i kind of forgot he existed for a while he he's like the muscle huh. that's like his role i guess um yeah so, yeah it's really funny because I think my favorite characters are Lotus and Seven. Uh, and, really? Um, and I, <laughs> That's yeah, <pretty> funny. <laughs> and it might it might be just because I spent a lot of time with them early on, right? Yeah. Like because mm-hmm. Lotus, I followed all the way through, and I think Seven is one of those characters who grew on me a lot. And I think also because his his revelation, his his thing was kind of like tied to me getting a bit deeper into the game. But also, I think 
his his kind of like uh, lack of knowledge alongside me as a player mm. kind of helped as well yeah. kind of endear me to his situation um and i do like his his kind of like obviously you know he's a cop slash detective so you know there's that whole mm. thing with it but as a character i think that he's he's a pretty good dude and like has a um a good moral compass and like clearly puts himself in danger like uh to save these kids like he has very much a um kind of paternal uh feel to him in a way and is is really going out on a, on a line to kind of save these kids which I, I appreciate and i think that his um his kind of like backstory was was good for me that i like quite a bit um so yeah um but i think yeah all the characters are, are great in their own way and i think clover's really interesting I, I feel like there's maybe a bit of a a line they ride that i feel is maybe why the act ending is a little problematic is it's kind of like oh she went off the deep end she's like mentally unstable type of thing which i think is a little rough in kind of like modern uh you know readings of stuff like this but um i think it's it's one of those weird things where like your tr- it's like you basically uh, not that you're puppeting clover but your interactions with clover really are, is the thing that unlocks the true ending right like that kind of relationship and making sure that she's okay after her brother seemingly dies um and all of all of that stuff that goes along with it i do i do like clover and i, I think that you know the way that she's handled in the true ending is is much better than you know the way things go in in other parts of of the narrative and i don't know it's just, it, it is just that weird thing where you almost feel like your decision directly impacts her more so i think than anyone else in the game oh absolutely um, yeah i think the most jarring is the middle path um i played safe to true ending this time through pretty much back to back okay. so i went um eight then seven um, and the difference between Clover and the two endings is astonishing. I mean, you go in room eight, yeah. Clover's super reserved. She doesn't want to talk to anyone. Uh, you go in room seven, and Clover's just, like, you know, making fun of, you know, seven the whole time and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. Just dropping, uh, you know, bits of knowledge and everything. And <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really a 180 between the two (laughs) yeah yeah once you tell her you know oh snake's left arm this bone was poking out she's like wait what did you say and she just completely flips and becomes so happy and like there's the art of her hugging junpei and it's just like whoa you just like murdered me with an axe not 10 minutes ago (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah if you go directly from that ending to that it's definitely uh very whiplash yeah Um, yeah and I think it, it depends, like, the order you get things, right? Because I actually didn't I didn't go down and do the coffin ending, right? So you can do the entire true ending route mm. to get to to get blocked at the coffin, right? Um, so I never did that, which means that I knew about all the snake stuff and him being in the coffin and, uh, you know, that he was alive in his arm and all that sort of stuff. And then I went down the true ending path and then, you know, as soon as that happens, I'm like, oh, I already know. But I think if you're doing that first time, you're like, what why is she happy now what's going like i just told her 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 brother like i just saw his corpse and those bones sticking out and now she's happy um it's a it's a weird moment i think and i think it's it's part of i think i was looking up on reddit and someone was like here's the the real way to play 999 which you always get with all these games it's like here's the true path you should take but i think a lot of people say you should play through the coffin ending first because it gives a lot of insight and like little tidbits Mm. that eventually then will kind of make other things make more sense in the other endings whereas doing the zero lost ending then straight into the true ending there are a lot of parts of the true ending where i'm like well i already know what's happening here because of everything that was revealed in the um the zero lost ending but um was there a version yeah. that they gave for that as well? Because I feel like it's maybe much more forgiving in the Nonary Games version. Yeah, I think... I, I don't know. I think this might have been before the Nonary Games okay. version came out. Mm-hmm. Um, so it would have just been for the DS version. But um, yeah, I think that that's a, a less enticing prospect for the DS version. Because then Absolutely, you have to play through yeah. the true ending path twice. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. the way through. Um, which, yeah, sounds a little bit rough, I guess. But... Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, now you mention it with the Seven and Clover stuff, I think actually part of the reason I do like Seven is that kind of Clover-Seven relationship along that path. I think that's that's yeah. actually a, a really good element of it, and I think that kind of, like, elevates him for me. I will say that um, Seven probably has one of my favorite moments uh, in the safe path. Uh, I think in that one you go with Seven through two of the three doors, or I don't remember how many. Yeah, But essentially do. along the way, uh, Junpei says something along the lines of, like, hey, you know, in order to succeed, you have to fail x number of times along the way and be okay with it right um and then at the end of that safe one seven says the exact same back 
uh, the exact same thing back to Junpei. And then Junpei says, who says that? And he says, you did. <laughs> and that's one of my yeah. favorite moments yeah. in the game. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, I, I think that that ending generally, like, it's just su- such a, a kind of like smacking you over the head with a bunch of stuff that it's um, <laughs> it's like hard to remember. <laughs> so it's like yeah. what happens when and yeah. what order. Oh, absolutely. But, um, yeah, especially if you play through it, you know, at, like playing through like the, the knife and the axe, you... It all mm. kind of just melts together, I guess. <laughs> cool. Um, well, yeah, I guess we've gone through most of the characters. Um, I don't know how you talk about the endings of this game. Like, there's so much stuff in here, right? We already yeah. kind of touched on the snake <laughs> thing, which is tied up with Nijisaki and Musashido and Kabuta <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. But, like, the general idea here, right, is those games happened however many... Nine years... Oh, of course, it's nine years ago. It's nine always nine. Ago, yeah. uh, nine years ago. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, and at that point in time, it was run by these Cradle Pharmaceuticals people. So Ace, the CEO, Hongo, with Nijisaki, who I think was the guy who designed the games, maybe, or came up with it. Musashido, who's like the investor, essentially. He's the captain who's dead on the mm-hmm. ship. Um, and whose bracelet is O, not zero, which yeah. in fact is number six, because yeah. O in base 10... Oh my god, it's a whole thing. But yeah, the, the the very idea that like you're counting in like base numerals where yeah. you get up to the number nine and then number number ten is represented by the letter A. So the alphabet starts from ten onwards, mm-hmm. uh, and then that kind of leads into things. Um, and Kubota, who is the ninth man, who kind of gets blown up. Um, yeah, I think the uh, the snake revelation was a big one for me because I did I had a feeling I was like he's not dead like there's something up here that's not him like I felt that even without the knowledge of the arm and all that sort of stuff from the very beginning I was like this guy has to come back because there has to be a way to resolve this clover stuff in some way right so I think I was always leaning on skepticism there but I think the way that it is explained the way that it comes together the idea I mean this is tied into the whole prosopagnosia thing which is a real thing right people not yeah. being able to recognize yeah. faces. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, the idea that Ace has prosopagnosia, which means that so Santa and June, as the kind of masterminds of this, set up Nijisaki, who kind of looks a little bit like Snake, dress him up in Snake's clothes while they take Snake and basically drug him i guess you sopril on him or something right and then mm-hmm. put him into the coffin throw nijusaki out there in order to bait ace into murdering him because ace also knows that snake knows of the events and is almost is basically tricked into killing his previous associate which to be honest wouldn't he have wanted to do that anyway because he wouldn't have wanted like he kills musashido to keep the secret from getting out there so i think he would have probably killed nijusaki as well but um yeah um i don't know that was yeah <laughs> i feel like now a lot of this you... is just explaining a lot of insane bullshit but it's it's real good now that you mention it it is very likely especially because he had the same exact process uh, uh thought process with the ninth man as well yeah. where he didn't want people to know about it does anyone have like a favorite revelation uh kind of uh, this kind of ending part of the game because there's lots of stuff that kind of ties into each other but is there anything that like sticks out to you so, as like oh shit i mean for me like the number one like massive twist in this game is the like the novel slash adventure mode twist which right so in the so in the ds version this is maybe this is obvious this is like the top screen is the dialogue and the bottom screen is all the narration and then Mm -hmm. it's sort of revealed at the end that the top screen is the present day and the bottom screen is akane or young akane narrating everything uh from the past. She actually has a line to um, let me pull it back. Yes, there's so much interesting stuff with this. Uh, but she she basically says you can think of it as two movies showing on the same screen at the same time, and like you know that's literally what's happening with the DS, so that's kind of cool. So actually, did you play most of it through in novel mode? If I yeah, so that's the yeah. thing, right? Like this is the thing that yeah. um, was a little bit annoying for the yeah. non <laughs> versions game is that you basically you can click on one of the triggers and it will switch between the dialogue mode and the uh kind of narrated mode and i always wanted the narrated mode because Mm -hmm. i wanted the kind of the bits of flavor text that talked about like 
you know uh the expressions that people had or yeah. like the the way people were looking or feeling at the time and you don't get that out of the dialogue um alone yeah. so the game defaults to just dialogue and so when i switched over the first time i was like oh what's this what's going on and it just gave me a lot more context right which is what i wanted um but it doesn't it doesn't do it can't do two screens right so it basically just flips the mode essentially it does the whole uh, well here's the thing it does the whole fuzzing situation right which is at the very end when they're flipping between uh young akane and you know present day junpei they do the whole kind of static um kind of switch over so every time you do click to see the narrated stuff it does the static switch over so i guess that is in universe saying you are switching perspective right now when you switch yeah. over to the kind of narrated mode of things mm-hmm. um which is interesting and so are you saying that the narrated kind of sections are young akane all the narration is fr- from a nine and it's re- it's so fascinating playing this girl playing this game again knowing that all the narrated sections are from a nine-year-old girl because like right she'll like she'll, like, <laughs> scry- she'll describe like exploded corpses as like oh there's tomato sauce everywhere and yeah. stuff like that and and even like present day akane uses food metaphors as well quite a lot really um, so oh, it's, wow, yeah okay. there's like it's really like uh interesting (laughs) playing again yeah i thought it was just like a a kind of my assumption was that the ds i I guess this is the case right the ds Mm. version doesn't have different modes because it does both at once right um no it doesn't yeah and so also a lot of the game was like rewritten in the nori games version because it has to all make sense from just the dialogue (laughs) so that's why in in the like novel mode there'll be a lot of like repeated stuff like junpei will say something and then the narrator yeah. will say the same thing and that's because I they see. have to they have to make it so it works with just one or the other whereas in the ds right. version it's just always both basically yeah i my i thought because i'd never really seen the ds version i thought that maybe they were getting around that stuff by like showing facial expression stuff or like doing a bit more with the visuals of it to kind of like visually indicate people you know looking sad or whatever um but i guess that does happen in the ds game because you do have the sprites and the characters and stuff like that um so yeah there's a way in which that works but yeah that that idea that i also so here's another thing that i read right online so i was looking at um i was watching kind of like a recap video but i actually went down to the comments of the recap video to see some and some of these people have some stuff which i did not realize uh which they do talk about so it is but the idea that akane's point of view on the bottom screen Mm -hmm. you're also always solving puzzles on the bottom screen so you're technically doing the past puzzles on the bottom screen for akane like she's getting the information from future junpei who is doing it but you're yes. actually solving it on a carne screen on the bottom which yeah, is yeah. like wow that is some nut shit because the nonu um, games are like exactly the same right the one they did right. with the children is exactly the same as the one they're doing now so yeah, yeah it's literally just yeah two it's Every, like the whole game is two timelines happening simultaneously simultaneously yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um which that's the thing they don't really talk about like I think it's why it's a good twist is because they they I think they probably seed it right the idea of a morphogenetic field but they don't they don't talk about it through time they talk about it through space right mm-hmm. they talk about it through well they kind of seed it because they talk about the rats with the generations of rats knowing afterwards and I guess time passes each time with like the um the the dog picture example right where they do it once and then later more people do it and later more people so i guess they do see that idea that it happens over time as well but um but i think the initial nonary games is like the idea is people in the present doing telepathic stuff with other people in the present which snake and clover seemingly have some success with because i remember a moment at the end of the game where snake is saying oh yeah my because we you know in in the past timeline they they do a bit of a flashback where snake's like i'm getting information from my sister she's in this other place and she's telling me stuff right so seemingly snake and clover do have a current present day morphogenetic field that happens so it can happen in multiple ways basically is is the idea yeah and another Um, way is the like junpei gets information from himself in another in another timeline right because he gets the combination to the safe is that information from himself or is that information from a carne who is send who sees all who of sees his time lines timeline and sends it to him that's what know. i'm confused i actually about. don't know um, <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. i want to say it's 
probably him sending it to Akane and then yeah. sending it back to I don't, him. Yeah. I don't know. The time definitely makes it a little bit weird. <laughs> yeah, I think it's supposed to be uh, Akane sending it to him because she's seen all these timelines where Junpei has died and she's having to find the right one. Just imagine seeing that as like a, a nine-year-old girl. That would be so yeah, traumatic. Yeah, one generator seeing yeah. all these possibilities in front of you. It's wild. Yeah, because especially when she says, when the fourth wall kind of breaks and she's like, I I think she says like, I am I, right? Yes. The letter I, which, yes. what is, is the letter I zero? Yeah. How no, is it it's, zero? Just, it's just the ninth no? letter. <laughs> Of course. It's, oh, it's the ninth letter. I think that's just right. It. Okay. But then in base yeah. 10, I would be another number. So that yeah, just messes I don't know things what it up. Is. Yeah. Okay. But then she's like, I am I, I am zero. I have mm. been whatever community. And you don't know yeah. it's Akane at that point. You're just like, I am zero. I am the person yeah. sending. And you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, it's, yeah. It's, so, it's yeah, weird. this is actually my absolute favorite moment of foreshadowing in the entire game, which is right, right, right at the beginning, before you know like anything what's happening. When, when there's the like you're in the the cabin room that floods mm. and you're looking in the mirror and you remember well you see you're looking in the mirror and you remember um like the moment junpei gets kidnapped right with the obviously zero with yeah. the mask and everything mm-hmm. yeah and on the narration screen so the bottom screen in the ds version mm. or in the novel mode in the mm-hmm. non games version it's uh he's looking at he gets home and he looks at the open window and it says huh that's weird did i leave that open um which because you don't know that the narrator's screen is never going to be in first person ever again for the rest of the game it doesn't like strike you as odd um but really that's akane <laughs> speaking to herself saying huh that's weird did i leave that open because she's zero standing behind junpei about to gas mask you know about to gas him right um, yeah it's like and then then never again up until right at the end does the novel screen ever use first person because it's like that would reveal it's a kind of yeah there's yeah. I, I feel like there's so many moments that like you play through it a second time it's like oh that's yeah. you know major foreshadowing and i think that's what makes yeah. this game so yeah. good is that it's not everything is just kind of like oh it's this way because it's this way it's you, mm. There was like little bits and pieces they gave you along the way, um, but no one would really ever assume the ending because it's so insane. <laughs> Another thing too that happens is um, you know whenever Akane has her feverish spells and she just disappears. Oh, yeah. That's like where she's burning mm. in the incinerator and dead. Yeah. Yeah. I was. I didn't really know what was going on with that. Right. Because she just disappears multiple times and i was always like well what's up with this fever what's going on how does that relate to anything and i actually like you can maybe tell me this at the at the very end of the game in the true ending she yeah. does it seems like she disappears again but like is it just santa taking her with him because that seemingly yeah. they say afterwards oh they they went already out the door was was me like or junpei looking over there seeing that she's gone is that uh, that's not her disappearing because you save her in that ending so is that just her going with santa out the door i was a bit confused by that as like a thing going on yeah it is it's just yeah it's just her and santa disappearing okay she's, yeah, yeah they don't alive. right so they don't really they basically just do the same thing that they do every time she just actually disappears because of timeline stuff yes. but in fact in this case she hasn't it's just that santa has taken yeah. her out the door with him basically yeah. um but i mean yeah i mean the point Randu made about yeah Akane's fevers happen whenever it happens whenever you make a decision that will lock you off from the true ending basically right. she starts literally she starts literally burning up yeah which is like, oh my god I mean that's, that's what the text says the text says you know <laughs> she it's starts trying burning to tell up. you <laughs> wow <laughs> that's fucking amazing yeah wow that is really cool uh yeah, because that was one of the... I, I guess that was how, in the DS version, I guess that was how you were supposed to work out what the which path to go out down without the flowchart. Was you were right. supposed to notice that Akane gets really sick every time you... Yeah, you just had to make <laughs> sure that she weird. was she was yeah. okay, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. And I guess the further down that like path you get, the more eventually she will just... Yes. She will basically just evaporate from the timeline, yes. essentially, which is what happens, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because she was never alive in the first place. Right, uh, and yeah. I guess in the, so because I I watched the coffin ending because she disappears, 
the thing is she disappears in the coffin ending but i think that's because you don't have you haven't done the whole clover thing right um or no you haven't yeah. seen the zero lost ending so you don't have the information to get further in yes. the because you don't have the code for the coffin because you never got it from the safe in the zero mm-hmm. lost ending right yeah right because she does disappear so you can't go through the nine door and so yes she's dead yeah exactly because you need uh, you need a snake in order to complete the number for you to go through right so okay but then also zero talks over the radio on that point in time which i guess you have to assume is santa at that point yeah i think that is santa yeah um Um, i think uh, because the thing that's weird about that because zero talks to you when everyone's in the the, um starting hallway together Mm. I don't know if like yeah. maybe they're pre-recorded or something like that. Um, that's the only thing I can really think of. But yeah, because everybody's there, aren't they? At the very beginning. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so it must have been pre-recorded. I don't. Yeah, I think everything that Zero says at that point would have been fine for them to have planned for. Well, I guess also they know exactly what he says because they because Akane saw it in the past. <laughs> and sure. So they, so, so they yeah. can pre-record it. They could even pre-record reactions to what people say because she's already seen it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah In yeah very wild very crazy um yeah anyone else have because i i have a very clear what the fuck moment that really <laughs> worked for me okay. but does anyone else have like a big one that stands out um so this one is one that i didn't realize until uh after the game um but I'll, uh what i think we've talked about this before a lot of uh puzzles and answers kind of flow back into the story of the game Mm. Um, one of which being the passcode to the safe and the passcode to the coffin. Um, yes. I bet Andrew uh, doesn't know about this stuff. <laughs> uh, so the passcode to the safe, passcode to the coffin, um, 1438342. If mm-hmm. you multiply it by nine, it gives you supposedly everyone's true value for their uh, their bracelet, which is oh. insane to me. Wow. So if you, each number, wait, no, just that whole number times by so nine? Yes, yeah, so you get that whole number and times it by nine, you get one, two, nine, four, five, zero, seven, eight, nine. And that is the sequence. Th- that's the reason Santa is nine and June right. is zero, yeah. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> this game is ridiculous. <laughs> like, I think for me that, that is... Well, um... the other thing, too, that's really neat about it is the fact that, like, in one of the early um in one of the early sequences they're talking about like favorite numbers and santa says something along the lines of oh i hate the number four it's you know such a middling number mm. i much prefer the number <laughs> nine because you know at least yeah. it's on one end of the spectrum huh also four uh in japanese yon i think that also means like death yeah because they skip four in like japanese hotels and stuff so like very unlucky i think yeah miranda do you have like a um a big revelation moment uh from kind of like the end portion of this game that kind of sticks out to you i don't know if it's a big revelation necessarily but i always like the little easter egg at the very end where you're leaving and you see alice just in the desert with her thumb out like hitchhiking <laughs> like what she's yeah. real after you've yeah. been told like so many yeah. times like oh no alice isn't real she's not real but uh there she is what a what yeah. a mic drop yeah, it, it it feels like the big red herring of the game, and then you get to the end, you're like, no, it wasn't <laughs> actually, <laughs> no, uh, this was real. Because you do, you open the, the uh, coffin, mm-hmm. and then you have the whole explanation about, like, no, she never really existed, blah, 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 there's, like, a key in there and everything, so... Um, yeah, so it's the, the assumption is, like, yeah, this was just a... This was a supernatural thing to throw you off the path from another supernatural thing which was actually uh the kind of cause of what's going on here but um yeah the whole all ice alice thing as well like yeah that that was uh very interesting i think back in the day too um i did the coffin ending and i was like oh what if it's alice in there even though that would make no sense it was just kind of crazy like what if it was her yeah totally and i think um I, I, as I said, I thought in the submarine ending, it's like, well, it must be Alice because everyone else is dead, right? So, so I was like, I was still on this, you know, train of that she's going to be around here somewhere and she's like the one doing Zero's bidding or is mm-hmm. maybe Zero herself, right? That was that was definitely a thing that I had at, at one point playing this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, 
we, we can talk about like potentially where things go but i did look at the cast for the mm-hmm. next game okay uh and uh and alice is just there so um so there is going to be some continuation <laughs> uh, i don't know how that figures into anything but yeah i looked at the castle like wait a second that's a fucking egyptian lady that just came out of coffin uh, so i don't know we'll see what's going on with that i'm, I'm sure uh you guys want to know my thoughts on, on what's happening um but um but yeah, for me, I mean, <laughs> for me, it was the stupid one right at the end. I think it's also insane that how all these numbers work every single time. Like the way that the story is plotted and planned for all these scenarios where it has to add up together, even in these situations where the bracelets are actually different from what you think they actually are. <laughs> and it always has to work every time. And um, and yeah, it's obviously insane. like having having the bracelets like be separated as well from the person and you know using those to create those numbers like the very the, like the idea that you get to that final room with the two nine doors and all those people go through and you just need snake and he's the one who's there in the coffin like the way it s- symmetrizes together i don't know the word for it but mm-hmm. the way it just kind of like coalesces is just it's beautiful that the, yeah. all the numbers like i think that's why some people love math it's like there's a magic in numbers and i think narratively this game somehow makes numbers magic right it just like makes it work um it's ridiculous it all works together the way it does and then even to get through the the final door right at the end it's just yes like... and for me that's the moment for me <laughs> where i was like wait a second wait a fucking second that's a cue and then i'm like oh shit it was called building cue like oh my god that was that, that was amazing i i was like uh, really bowled over because i'm like well how does this it's a nine like there must be something wrong right like they were able to get out of it before is the situation that the door was changed for the modern timeline right because in the past timeline akane is able to get out with the bracelets that she has uh and she is able to open the door which adds up to nine so it's not q in the past non yes. games but they change it at the very end to make it q so that all five of the characters remaining are yes. able to get through essentially i mean but yeah or basically so ace can't escape because they make it they turn it from yes. nine to eight essentially so right yeah <laughs> They make it impossible, and and he yeah. has to die essentially. So, mm-hmm. yeah, the whole Q thing for me was like, wow, that's a that's just like a cherry on the cake. It's just like beautiful shit, uh, making that all work together. So, um, and then it you sent through on Discord a thing that was like, well, in Japanese, mm-hmm. nine is Q is Q. Yeah, is so, that how you say it? Yeah, so it's literally said as Q. So, um, all the like time zero said, oh, you know. You have to make it through the Q door. The Q door, right? Um, oh my pr- god! From their perspective, they were thinking, "Oh well, all these other doors have numbers on, so <laughs> presumably yeah. this one does as well." But he I was mean, using yeah. the, he was using the English letter Q. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. That's oh my god! It's so <laughs> ridiculous! Absolutely insane! How does that work with like kanji though? Like, does that work in the same way? Like, uh, I have no idea yeah. how that would make sense, right? Because it would have to be written down on a page, right? Yeah. So I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if I bet in the Japanese version it is literally written as the number nine. If I had to guess, and then right, the yeah. twist is just oh, they're pronounced the same. They um, just say it out it, loud. It's actually kind of funny with the localization because uh, obviously it doesn't work you know in the english language so yes. in the english localization of 999 on the ds they added in this thing where it's like oh they're actually reading off of a piece of paper um mm. but then they mess up uh, later on and accidentally do it out of the speaker instead of showing the piece of paper because yeah. <laughs> that's what it was I like see. in the original japanese one <laughs> got you okay so in japanese they just say it and they don't have yep. the paper yep mm. that makes sense okay. from from my it, understanding yeah. I, yeah that is yeah case. i think i read something like that some time ago yeah i mean it it's great that they got it to work from japanese into english right like i think the fact that it hits just as hard regardless Mm -hmm. of what language you're doing is um yeah is was awesome um yeah um i i I still here's the thing the hang up for me right that i still and you know this could be you guys could say hey just play the rest of the games this could be a thing right i just like there is a paradoxical nature to akane being alive even though akane is dead right it is like how can the two simultaneously be true especially because both uh well not santa but both um snake and seven were witness to akane 
being burned to death right they have those memories of her being dead yet they exist in a timeline where she is alive so that for me is one of those things where i don't know if there's a explanation there for it or if they square that away but that was the thing that keeps hanging over of like i get this paradoxical nature that it is like it's sequentially like logical because she has to have existed and survived in order to create her own survival but i think the idea that people remember her being dead is um i don't know doesn't doesn't quite work for me but i don't know what you guys think so some of it for me is you know it's based in a real paradox i think they mention it the the casual loop um which basically you know if something like this happened it theoretically in real life no one knows exactly what would happen so you can kind of just make up whatever you want unfortunately um that's kind of where i go for it is mm. yeah it's all based in theory and whatnot no one could say exactly okay. what would happen so yeah you i don't you're not gonna get a nice explanation in, no well, i mean yeah may, maybe if you like uh once you understand the like rules of the world maybe a little bit more you might be able to like come up with your own theory but there isn't a bit where they okay. go hey remember at the end of 999 this is what actually happened uh, right so okay so, so the future games don't really like loop back around to kind of square to that to try and away. explain this paradox right, right. No. but i guess there'll just be more information that i get that will help with yeah that. maybe I, I would say okay. yeah um the way the way to probably think about it is like there is only one there is only one true thing that happens which is she survives and makes the game and yes uh and we go to the true ending and then all all the other endings are sort of parallel and like not really happening and then everyone's memories is where that falls a little bit um like askew it's like not quite doesn't yeah. quite fit it's like possible maybe akane's like doing weird things with the morphogenic field to like right. mess with their memories like that's entirely possible mm. but uh it's like there isn't there is no neat explanation for yeah it's just a paradox which is sometimes what a story has right <laughs> yeah i guess i guess you could also kind of think of it as like um you know akane sending uh, whether intentionally or not the memories of where she died through the morphogenetic field maybe i guess that could kind of be an explanation was seven's memory loss explained at some point i can't remember if they talk about like why that uh, happened um, um i don't think they state specifically what yeah. caused was it, it maybe a situation where he got like a higher dose of the soberil yeah I, I do recall something like that because i think he basically yeah. needed to have stuff. amnesia in order for things to yeah oh he absolutely did yeah mm -hmm. yeah but basically any plot hole in this game can be explained by oh yeah. well i can't saw it in the past so she had to recreate it <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah yeah because in order for obviously people to not know ace was ace they had to mm -hmm. have not seen him or know who he was mm -hmm. yes exactly yeah i don't i think they basically get it for every single person but obviously seven so who he was so the only way they could explain it was amnesia unfortunately and i guess like the, the question was always also to me of like well the people that um they want to punish really um is uh all of the pharmaceutical people right so mm -hmm. ace and all of his cronies and i guess like the only way to do that is that you need to have nine people right mm -hmm. but theoretically you couldn't really put all four of ace and his cronies together because they all would know each other and would know a way out of it because they designed yeah. it in the first place right mm -hmm. so uh, they basically had to create a scenario where i mean ace doesn't quite exist on his own but he he is so callous that he basically uses one of his cronies as an experiment to be like yeah. well is this really for real um and then they kind of that's that's kind of fucked up thing about it is like <laughs> the the akane and is it aoi uh santa's real name yeah Aoi. Um, something like that. Yeah. yeah they basically have to take these innocent people who've been through this before mm -hmm. like snake and clover and be like well yeah. sorry guys we're gonna kind of have to drag you into this fucked up game because mm -hmm. you know we've got to punish these these people in like this very specific way but also has to be set up in this very specific way because 
my sister saw it when she was nine. Yeah. Uh, it's like, yeah. it's so, yeah. it's, yeah, there's, there's just like, the more you peel back at it, it's like, yeah. okay, well, I guess it did all have to be this way because she, she, your sister saw the future yeah. uh, through forming a morphogenetic field with her best friend slash boyfriend when they were nine years old, now mm-hmm. in the future. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's great. I love it. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, so the other thing is, because of the way their plan works, they actually... Ace is the one that kills all the other... Like, they don't have to get their hands dirty, even, because Ace is the one yeah. that kills the Ninth Man and the guy dressed as Snake and the captain right. in the captain's quarters. Exactly, um, yeah. They basically so. play his blood. They basically puppeteer him all yeah. the way through um, mm-hmm. because they know his temperament. And, well, I guess they yeah. also know exactly what he's going to do yeah, because they've seen it before. Exactly. But, yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's well set up. Um, cool. Um any any other elements here that we haven't kind of touched on that anyone wants to to bring up about the have, the wild stuff in this video game? I have one more insane, or a couple more actually insane bits of okay. foreshadowing that I All right. want to talk about. There's when they're in the shower room. There's like uh, you can like click on a like thermostat, and um, they're like talking about temperatures and stuff. And <laughs> Santa just like knows exactly what temperature a human body burns at. <laughs> and, ah. Jupe, and, Jupe, and Jupe literally goes, hey, that's a weird thing to know. And Santa's uh-huh. like, hey, it's important to me, right? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, that's crazy. And then one other bit was when uh, there's a scene, I think you're just in like some corridor somewhere. And someone mentions how, oh, it's like kind of weird that... Uh, if someone says, "Oh, isn't it weird that like Snake and uh, Snake and Clover are brothers, uh, a brother and sister?" Brother and sister, yeah. And Ace is like, "Why?" And he's like, "Well, can't you see their like faces look nothing alike?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's there's a, yeah. quite a yeah. few references to uh, mm-hmm. to uh, Ace not being able to tell people's faces. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it's even yeah. Santa that does that. So he like he knows what he's doing. He's like deliberately messing with. <laughs> right. So. Yeah, it's it's so slight that. Mm. If you didn't know, you'd just re- read over it. But yeah. again, mm. going back a second time, it's like, wow, mm-hmm. that foreshadowing. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I love stuff like that. And um, yeah, if I was to to play through this again, or even like watch through uh, someone play it, I think it, it it's very yeah. rewarding in that way, right? Like you, mm-hmm. once you know everything, then there's a lot of like small things that you can pick up on and, and enjoy, which is which is awesome. Um, mm-hmm. And um, yeah. Uh, any any other things? Um, the only other thing I wanted to touch on, and this is something I'm a little bit hazy on, is the final puzzle. I don't really remember oh, how it works out in the Nonary yeah. games. Version. Okay, yeah. It's very different between the DS and the uh, Nonary games. Do you know what the DS version is, MP? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I've heard about some Sudoku stuff. Yeah, so you have I to... I don't know what that means. So you have to... So the game, this is the point where in the like Nonary Games version, it's like switching between Akane Vision and Junpei Vision like really quickly, right? So you're starting to yes. like understand that there's like two things going on. And right. then the final puzzle, on the bottom screen, there's just a Sudoku grid, but it's upside down. <laughs> okay. And you have to turn your DS upside down and oh, or, or just solve the puzzle upside down. They did this before it. Pokemon. <laughs> exactly. Um, it yeah. was, yeah, it's like... And it's way, you know, it's just way more interesting than the the weird final puzzle in the Nonary Games, where you just have to sort of like spell password or something. Like, you basically replace, yeah, you basically replace yeah. the numbers with password. Mm-hmm. But the first time I did it, like my mm-hmm. assumption was I didn't know the password thing, so my assumption was I need to make every number nine. So mm-hmm. I did. I made every number nine, but then it didn't work. But the only way to make it work yeah. is if it says password on the bottom as well as every number being nine on the grid. Um, which basically meant I'd reset it and then once you yeah. reset it and you know it's password you just do the direct replication or the, d- the direct swap between the letter mm-hmm. and the number and it will just instantly do it within about yeah. you know 10 seconds it's actually very easy uh, once you know what to do but um, yeah I think I think it's a little weird because it doesn't I mean it's not supposed to tell you what to do right it's the last puzzle so it's kind of yeah. like hey figure this out but um, I was a little bit like well I it feels like it should be 9 here everywhere but then it didn't quite work for me but Hey, yeah, it mean? feels like weirdly rushed in the Nori game version. Mm-hmm. So in the, yeah, in the original version, you literally have like a car- young Akane crying on the top screen while you're like trying to solve this Sudoku puzzle upside down. It's like really impactful. Wow. 
Uh, so I do you still get the two plus four plus five plus seven plus eight out of the Nona reversion? I imagine you probably have. Yeah. That basically says like, hey, yes. this is the combination to the door. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. It does give you that after you put in the password, which the password is nine, and then it gives you those that sequence of numbers. Um. So. Gotcha. Yeah, which I, I then guess does that then lead to the Q revelation? I think I think that's what. Yeah, happens. that's yeah. sort of what they say is oh these just happen to be our bracelets we should try them on the door. Yeah, yeah, um, which is just great. And then they get out there and they're in the desert. Turns out they're in the uh, the Nevada facility. They were in Building Q. Oh, I mean that makes sense now because instead of the number being nine on the ship the number is the letter is q because they are in literally oh, in building, building q. q yeah so it makes sense um yeah okay i said you just sent through on discord the uh, upside down version of yeah. uh, this thing and this looks awesome like if i were to see that on a ds and realize oh shit mm. i need to flip it upside down in order <laughs> to solve this uh that's amazing that's that's really really cool um and yeah it feels like for all the problems with the DS version of replaying stuff, which I think to me would have been just a bit of a detractor of getting through this game, it feels like you do lose something in the translation um, with the multiple mm -hmm. things you've talked about, right? With the like, the kind of the two perspectives, point of views being on the two different screens, right? And this entire like flipping puzzle idea, like this is what I love in games, like mm -hmm. like playing with the medium in order to do storytelling stuff, right? And, um, and unfortunately, I think that because the DS is a very unique system and you're gonna put this game in other places, you can't quite do the same thing. Um, which is, yeah, it's unfortunate, but. Um, Just such a shame, there's no like definitive version of this game now because like, yeah. the, Nor like the Nori Games version has the flowchart and, and voice acting, of course. Um, right, yeah. And, like all sorts of other quality of life stuff uh, that makes it like so much easier to recommend like it's basically imp impossible totally. to recommend the ds version which to some extent is like narratively the superior version yeah um, yeah that's exactly what i was going to say is it's really hard to say like hey you know this one or that one it's they both have really big positives and really big negatives was virtue's last reward on 3ds Yes, uh, uh, it, I it came out on 3ds and Vita at the same time, yeah. so it doesn't okay. it doesn't use any like crazy uh, ah because it had to be a cross screen, screen platform. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no games yeah, never yeah. came out on 3ds, right? It was like way too late. No, the no, 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 no games is only on PlayStation and on PC. That's it. Not even um, on Switch yet. No, not on, and that's the real tragedy. Like, I, I really think that this should be put on Switch. Um, I don't know why it hasn't at this point in time, which sucks because it's a series that originated on Nintendo hardware, and mm -hmm. um, you know, I think should should be there, should it belongs there, right? Um, but I was thinking, like, if there was a 3DS version of 999 that kind of took both elements here and combined them together, yeah, that, that would really nice. would be the best version, right? It would be the mm -hmm. ideal way to play this game. Um, and I don't know, maybe one day some some genius hacker will will put that together a rom that is uh the ds stuff on a 3ds that has voice acting and, and all that stuff uh, added together um that would be ideal I did um i guess did you play through uh, on the nonary games for years you who did play through on that as well in japanese or in english um because i think it gives you the choice doesn't it played in english i think yeah. um i probably played through in english and i it, honestly i don't remember the nonary games version that well because i actually looked okay. up the other day if it had voice acting which i guess it does it does yeah, yeah it yeah. does it's really yeah. nice um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i i think it's a good thing i think some of it is quite hammy uh and uh yeah. <laughs> a little weird um i don't know i don't really like junpei's voice actor he's I don't know, he just sounds like a bit of an asshole, if I'm honest. Maybe that's because Junpei is a little bit of an asshole, or can mm. be at points in this game. But um, I don't know, he just he just sounds a bit off to me. But so, the other characters I thought were really well done, generally. Um, and yeah, I, th I wonder if that... Did you like, notice maybe... the uh, critical role? Uh, yes, yeah, Talison Jaffe is Snake. I picked yeah. that up straight away. I was like, oh, hello, Talison, <laughs> how are you doing? Um, which, uh, it becomes a super... Once you've watched enough Critical Role, it becomes mm -hmm. a superpower where you're, like, instantly whoever it is. For, like, uh, get ready for VLR, yeah. where a third of the cast is. <laughs> oh, shit, really? Okay, yeah. well, uh, that's I thought good. you were going to say get ready for Ganondorf, but yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah, that as well. well. Matt Mercer as Ganondorf, which I'm uh, mm -hmm. very excited for that. Um, 
but uh but yeah no i, I thought overall the, the the acting was really good i think maybe that does contribute to me liking specific characters because like mm-hmm. i thought seven and lotus had good performances right some of the better mm-hmm. ones out of the cast so yeah. um yeah I, th- I think that probably makes a bit of a difference um clovers was a little weird as well which i think also contributed to the weird creepy axe There's ending stuff that. yeah um so yeah i don't know that's that true was, i don't uh, know if i've ever done the axe ending in the notary game so i can mm-hmm. only imagine how the voice acting of that <laughs> ending goes yeah i mean you know the piece of artwork where it's her hand reaching down with the kind of crazed yep. eyes and that like mm. that paired with the voice but i yeah i didn't sl- i will say i didn't sleep well like after multiple <laughs> nights of playing bad endings of this game <laughs> because it's messed up it's a, it's a like, creepy game yeah. at points it is cool i mean i i don't know what's going to happen next but <laughs> you all have played like the next game in this series yeah. uh what am i what am i in for uh <laughs> i've heard i've heard that this next game is is very good and in for a lot of people is the best in the series and is better than 999 and seeing how much i love 999 i i feel pretty excited to play this thing it's definitely the best yeah it's it's bigger <laughs> it's yeah it's longer, longer. Yeah, it's absolutely. the twists are bigger in magnitude um okay it's uh i i'd say i i don't think it has quite the like emotional core that okay 999 has with the like junpei and akane stuff Uh, right i i agree i think Uh, it feels a little bit more sterile but mm. but it's still like if if you like twists uh there's a bit more anime bullshit going on too so it's a bit more Mm. you can you you'll be able to fill in the gaps. So at the moment in your like Uchikoshi anime bullshit chart, you have nine 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 at the beginning, right down the bottom, and you have AR hey, the Somnium Files <laughs> on the other end. You'll be able to fill yeah. in the gaps and see his progression to more and more anime bullshit okay. As, okay. as time goes so, on. That makes sense. So are you saying that AI is like his real like absolute <laughs> yes. furthest yes. end of it? Okay. I think so, yeah. yeah. Honestly, I yeah, I don't know that you could get much further than that. <laughs> no, because Jesus Christ! <laughs> like, no. oh when God. the protagonist is Date, it's like, uh huh, <laughs> yeah. No, here's the thing, though, right? And I think we talked about it on, on Discord before. If if the third game in that series is Date and um, what's her face, uh, the the other AI who's Tama? in um, Tama. Oh yeah, yes, to- yeah, yeah, Tama. Tama. Yeah, if if it's Date yes. and Tama together. <laughs> that is all that Get game ready. will be it will that, will that is the only thing that game will be there will be no plot there will be no mysteries it will just be horny jokes for 30 hours and in some ways i'm morbidly fascinated to see that but like that to me is the end trajectory of this man's mm-hmm. career going from like fascinating mysteries into just like horny visual novels so um i think he worked on an anime called punchline that was i i watched the first episode of it one time and i was like what because it was very anime bullshit from what i remember yeah. and i did not watch any other episodes okay <laughs> yeah yeah it seems like he has been involved in writing other projects outside of game stuff um and i guess with his own company now he kind of free because he technically is freelancing with ai the somnium files with spike chunsoft is that right yeah yeah it's like technically not a 2q mm-hmm. joint i guess yeah um so yeah we'll see going forward one thing I will say about the next game is I do remember liking the escape rooms a significant amount yes. more. Yeah. Okay. I agree. And there's also... There's there's a lot more variety. Yeah. It's more puzzly, less, like, math problems. And there is, like... There's one escape room per section rather than two. Which uh, That's good. And do they generally good. make it an easy kind of prospect of jumping around the chart in the same way as the non original Oh, yeah. So yep. mm-hmm. VLR had the chart from the original. Yep. Okay. So it's more built around that as a core part of the game. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah. That's great. Um, I mean, I'm very excited to play it. Um, it is one of those that, like, having done this now as well as, like, re-reminding myself after a week of just, like... Um, <laughs> You know, you kind of get all that all at once, and then I was like, "Oh man, yeah. I, I feel like I should jump into the next one straight away because otherwise, all this just will mm. seep away, right? The knowledge will just go, and I feel like it will be beneficial to have all of that fresh, as well as just the idea that Alice is in this game, and I just need to know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> it's so intriguing. Uh, with that, um, so yeah, seemingly, I mean, it seems like there's just nine new characters. I mean, eight plus Alice, and. Uh, and there is another zero potentially like this is the thing right 
I know who Zero is from the first game, but like I feel like this is a series where it's kind of the concept of Zero is a thing, as opposed to a person being Zero the same every time. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. Maybe Akane is Zero in this other game for some reason. I mean, she had another trauma uh, post, uh, you know, this series and has to do it all over again. But um, I don't know, it's interesting. That, that's my theory so far, is that Zero is, is a concept to stand in uh, and, you know, eventually is, is revealed as someone else um but i don't know that's 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 all my thoughts going into it i have heard that it's it's not like the same setup in terms of the game it's not like the bracelets and the doors and that sort of stuff it's a it's still like a weird not murder game but are, it's, it's something else there are bracelets and there are doors but they're not the same oh okay all right yeah. cool yeah. well um i'm sure i'll find out soon and uh yeah. Yeah, and uh, and then I'm sure we'll talk about that game when it comes down to it. Also, so um, yeah. Well, uh, thanks so much, guys, for joining me on this and uh, for illuminating me with your knowledge of the DS version and all the wild mm -hmm. stuff that I missed out on. Um, and yeah, all the crazy things in this game. Um, I I don't know if anyone wants to plug themselves on Twitter or anything, or if, if people want to find you around the spot. But uh, everyone's on Discord. Join the Discord. Join the Discord. Join the TLR <laughs> Discord. Yeah. It's, it's great fun. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, thanks so much for joining me, everybody. Yeah, thanks for having us. I do yeah. actually, uh, if you don't mind, I can plug my little Instagram. I do post, Go for like, it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I post, like, my aesthetic gaming desk setup. Uh, it's a fun time. Mostly do, like, the sort of cozy gaming kind of vibes, but it's a good time. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at aka Mirandum. That is at aka M-I-R-A-N-D-O-O-M. Very nice. Taking the Bally approach to uh, spelling it out. I appreciate it. I mean, people misspell my name pretty horribly sometimes. I'm so. sure, yeah. Great. Acerbis, PR Billy, anything else you want to? Uh, I mean, the only thing I'll plug is uh, go play Zero Escape. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And MBZ, go go play Virtues. Go play Piano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh it's my next task uh i will be on it um yeah the the one thing i'll say again from this experience is um i i was playing on a plane um mm -hmm. over to america and i did get stuck right at the very beginning on that first goddamn puzzle with the um the shower rooms and looking through the 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 hole in the shower room to hit the tile and move the tile out the way um mm -hmm. so uh i was like on that plane and i was sitting next to a colleague who is has also played these games and i was like man do you can you remember what to do with this he's like i, I don't remember i don't remember the escape room so i was stuck on that for a little while uh so um it is it is one of those games that i appreciated having the internet there to just be like i'm in bed it's 10 p.m i don't yeah. want to do this problems so i'm just going to figure it out um but um yeah i would i would say that's like a, a minor blemish on what is otherwise like a phenomenal game uh, and one that uh, i should have listened to people sooner and played sooner but hey here we are now in the year 2023 and it is achieved it's ticked off the backlog um so there you go um all right well that's going to do us uh, thanks everybody for listening uh we'll be back at some point whenever i have no idea when i'm actually going to post this so but i don't know when but uh there's episodes happening you listen to this podcast you know what's going on so uh yeah we'll uh we'll uh, be back soon with something uh, until then thanks for listening we'll see you soon bye bye folks mm -hmm.